Well, it looked like a boring 13-14 days ever since we last saw Arsenal play, I think, on the 18th of March and you headed into the international break. And obviously, we are back finally to bring you what we call the match preview. Arsenal versus Leeds, a game that's going to be happening at Emirates Stadium, a stadium that capacitates 60,700 and and four people into that stadium. Welcome to Rockandy Media Football. How are you guys? And where you watching us from? I go by the names of Rock and David. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you watch us for the if at all you're watching us for the very first time, lower right bottom corner is the place the place to be. Smash the black button that has the word subscribe. After smashing it, hit the notification bell. That will enable you to get notified every time we upload a video onto our YouTube channel. Now <clears throat> Asmo is left with 10 games to go, and this is going to be the 10th game. After Saturday, they would have been left with 9 games to go. Remember, the recent form of Asmo has been really decent because they happen to have won 6 out of their last 6 games. And for Leeds, out of the 3 games, they've lost 1, won 1, and drawn 1. So it shows you that they're at least trying not to lose very many games. Out of 3, they've lost 1. And this time around, they're coming at the Emirates, where Arsenal are really going to really boss. They will look at Leeds. They're into the relegation zone, I think. And they need to fight hard to get out of the relegation zone. Because, <clears throat> as the table stands, Leeds are 14th with 26 points. They are just... Two points, two points above West Ham that is placed 18th. And remember, Leeds United is Leeds United has played a game, one more game than a team known as known as uh, <coughs> than a team known as West Ham. So that shows you that they need to find themselves in a position of winning very many games. Because if at all if at all West Ham wins their game they have in hand, they'll go ahead of Leeds and Leeds might find itself into the 18th position. That is a relegation zone. Arsenal <coughs> is having 69 points seated on, on the bottom of the table, eight points clear ahead of City. City has played 27 games and Arsenal has played 28, meaning that Arsenal are really having one game in hand. Sorry, City is having one game in hand that Arsenal have played more than them into that tie. So that shows you that by the time Arsenal plays against Leeds, they would have known the result between Man City and Liverpool. That's the lunch kicker or the lunch kick the lunch <coughs> the lunch the lunch fast kick starter in onto Saturday, and Arsenal are really crossing their hands to it that this result doesn't go in favor of Manchester City. Is Liverpool going to shock them? We are going to see that tomorrow as we break down that beautiful game of football. Now, Leeds have been a very indecent side this season. The last time Arsenal went there, <coughs> the game ended 1-1. It's one of the hardest games I've seen Arsenal win this season. It was really hard for them to win. Leave alone Bournemouth because Arsenal was at home, they are getting chances. But in the game of Leeds, Odegaard scored, the, was it Odegaard or Bukayo Saka, one of the two, scored the one goal that they really scored, they needed to win the game. But obviously, they looked bad and bad and bad and bad. So, this time around, Arsenal really having lots of players to return. Jesus is here, he never went for international break. Ben White has been here. Um, Gabriel Magales has been here, he never went for the <coughs> international break. Then, those that went to the international break returned fully fit, apart from Thomas Partey, who was really a worry and a doubt, but... We've seen him today training for Arsenal, and that has been our first story about Arsenal today. So as it stands, looks like Arsenal are really going to be having a fully fit squad, minus William Saliba, Nketiah, <coughs> um, El Nini, and Tomiyasu. For Tomiyasu and El Nini, their seasons came to an end. They're out. Don't expect them to play any part in the season of Arsenal. But Saliba might return next weekend. Mm, Nketiah is soon returning. And uh, who else? I think those are the only players that are really missing out. But for Kian Tierney, most of Arsenal fans were really worried about him being taken off because of <clears throat> because of the injury he got when Spain was being beaten by Scotland. You know that Kian Tierney is a Scot, but it was a precautionary measure that has seen him really get back into training today. And I've seen him in the videos training with the Arsenal first team today. So when got leads, they are having <clears throat> Gintonto is a doubt. After getting, a, after getting a knock during the Italy game they played, I think they're playing against Malta. Then <clears throat> Maximilian Woba, he's a defender. He's having a thigh injury. And those are the two casualties that Leeds got during the international break. But Gintonto is having an ankle injury. I've seen very many stories linking him to Arsenal, but I've not gone ahead to really do those stories because I don't believe in him right now. So, <clears throat> as it stands, they are welcoming back 
Stuart Dallas and Adam Forshaw, sure, you get. Then Louis Sinsest Louis Sinstera and Pasco Studjic. They are really returning back. So you might find them having Aaron Sin Sin Sinistera and Bomb for leading the line for side known as leads as they take on Arsenal. But Rodrigo is out of action. He's out of action. But the rest of the players of Leeds are really back. <laughs> they are really fully fit to face Arsenal. Now, <clears throat> let's go into the predicted starting level of Arsenal and guess who is really going to come in through because the contentious positions are simple. One, Thomas Partey or Jorginho. Then, Gabriel Jesus or Leandro Trossard. Who is starting? Let's get into this because most of the positions are already decided because these players have gone ahead to assert themselves into the team of Arsenal. The system that Arsenal plays with usually nowadays is obviously <clears throat> a 4-3-3 system. That's what Arsenal really plays with and Mikel Arteta always names four defenders, three midfielders and three forwards. In goal, I think uh, however much Matt Turner was good for for the for the American national team, I think Ramsdale is going to start in goal because these 10 games, I don't see Matana getting a spot into the starting level of Arsenal unless otherwise Ramsdale gets an injury. But Ramsdale is going to start in goal. For the right back position, Arsenal have only one right back available. That is Benny White. Tomiyasu is away on injury and his season came to an end after undergoing a successful knee surgery. But then Cedric Soares is at Fulham on loan so that goes in for Ben White to come in through and play that position very well. <clears throat> for the left back, Kian Tien played very well in the last game they played at Emirates. He came in and played like 25 minutes for Zinchenko and had an assist for Bukayo Saka but Zinchenko is another one who has been really having a very decent form for Arsenal but Kian Tien also had a very decent two games he played for his national team Scotland into <clears throat> the qualifiers of the UEFA Europa the UEFA, the Euros 2024. But I believe it's none other than Zinchenko that's going to start because he has gone ahead to really give that position a new definition at Arsenal. The left back position of Arsenal has been given a new definition at Arsenal. And I've read a story or an article about Mikel Arteta going ahead to to really show us how he got in, he got to know to play with an inverted left back almost acting as a midfielder he said when he was at barcelona he used to play that system and at man city pep Guardiola used to play that so he has zinchenko in that system so i believe zinchenko is going to start on the left back then we go to the right side of the central defense it's obviously rob holding do you know why william saliba is out and they don't want to rush him to come to get a setback so he's going to play to that position and i think in the game of crystal palace he played very well in the game of uh, Lee, in the game of oh, <coughs> sorry, in the game of Sporting Lisbon, he played very well. Then, in the game of uh, Leeds, we expect him to face the likes of Bamford, and I think he's really going to be one of those that is going to stop Bamford because if at all you can stop um, Matat, if you can stop um, this guy, Wilfred Zaha, and is it Eduardo? Yeah, I think you can really find yourself in a position of really stopping Bamford in there for you. Because Bamford is not physical. It's all about you having a very good game reading to stop him. Gabriel Magalhães, never part of the Brazil national team. I think he's going to be enjoying his spell at Arsenal again and start on the left side of central defense. It's going to be their second game in a row to start in the Premier League with Rob Holding into that position. Then after that, the most contagious position is Partey or Jorginho. Thomas Partey looks like he's having a knock, but... He has been assessed back into training session with Arsenal. But I believe <clears throat> if Amikel Ateta, as Arsenal prepares for the game of Liverpool over the weekend, I don't risk my best CDM at my team. I think Thomas Pate will be so much needed in the game of Liverpool. So to me, I believe I put Jorginho. I started Jorginho to play against Leeds because Manchester United had to beat Leeds when they never had even Casemiro. That's it. So I think... Jorginho can get that job done very well in the midfield alongside Martin Odegaard who survived a very ridiculous tackle coming in from Rodri that was supposed to be a penalty for Norway but was not given. Then the vice captain of Arsenal Granit Xhaka who has gone ahead to pick his form back in the final bend of the season playing in the midfield three of Arsenal. So that means Xhaka, Jorginho and Odegaard are expected to start 
onto that side according to me so after Jacques Jorginho let's go to the three forwards that Arsenal are going to throw into this game I believe <clears throat> for Saka no brainer not so for Saka no brainer because no player can come in and really give him a run for that position and he's just a man in his own island but one thing I credit on Saka is every time he has been alone in that position he has not gone ahead to down tools because he knows that he needs to put himself in a position of really consolidating that position however much someone is brought in the summer to compete with him maybe Moussa Diabe he would have gone ahead to cement that position for Arsenal and I think he deserves the £300,000 a week that is going to be given and his new contract as a week salary. So I think Bukayo Saka is going to start onto that right attacking side of the midfield. Let's go to the left forward. We are having <coughs> Race Nelson, Emily Smith Rowe, uh, Tr Trossard, Gabriel Martinelli. Close to three, four players fighting for that position. But I believe. <coughs> The only two that are really so much close to start onto that position are Trossard and um, Martinelli. And I think <clears throat> it's going to be Martinelli. Six games, six goals. No reason as to why the manager really benches him. Martinelli is going to play on the left forward of Arsenal. Now, that means we are left with Trossard and Jesus to really battle for the number nine or the forward position of Arsenal. Who is going to start as a center forward, guys? Trossard played close to 10 games seven goal involvements one goal and six assists jesus by the time he left he had six assists and five goals so he has been starting some good games for arsenal yes he, he that is trossard i mean and then Tro, and and then jesus ever since returned he played just 45 minutes in the game of sporting lisbon and was really benched off the field of play so to me i believe it's high time the number nine of arsenal took back his position I think Jesus is going to start onto that position because he's really fully fit and has been to as a, and he has been and, and he has he has been seen today training at the Arsenal side of uh, London Conley. So that is my prediction starting eleven of Arsenal. I don't know what your thoughts are about it, but I believe that team can go all away and really get Arsenal a win because for Jesus, I think he just needs to start. <clears throat> All the time that was needed for him to heal has been given to him. He has been playing 45 minutes against Sporting Lisbon, 13 against Fulham, 25 against Crystal Palace. It's high time he came in through. You know, he comes in three starts, he plays some 60, 70 minutes. Then you bring in Trossard depending on the game situation. And uh, I think for him to earn his goal scoring confidence again, this is the game for him to score. This is the game for him to go ahead and really score the goals for him and his club of Arsenal. So to me, I think Arsenal are going to destroy, destroy Leeds. You know why they're going to destroy it? Let me show you certain aspects here that really show you that Arsenal is going to go ahead and really destroy Leeds badly at the Emirates because the following stats are no longer, are no longer, are no longer near in the favor of a team known as Leeds because Arsenal have gone ahead to lose just one game at <clears throat> Arsenal have gone ahead to lose just one game at the Emirates and drawn one the rest of the games have gone they've been winning and I don't see Leeds putting in a shocker because it's not a team that you can credit on being disciplined on being disciplined defensively that's it if you call the most defensive teams, Leeds is not there. I want to say that, but Bournemouth came in and shocked them. Bournemouth is Bournemouth because Bournemouth are really having a very good defense and they really packed the bus. Though the bus never packed off, and Arsenal will keep knocking on the door to say to it that they really come in through and get those goals in. So, to me, my mind is telling me that Arsenal are really going to win because of these stats and the head to head that the history holds for these two teams. Arsenal are unbeaten in their last 13 meetings with Leeds in all competitions. 11 wins and 2 draws since a 3-2 home loss in May 2003 that ended the Gunners' little title bid that season. So, Arsenal last lost to Leeds in 2003. The game ended 3-2. I remember Mark Viduka coming in and really humiliating Arsenal. Then, since a 0-0 draw in the first Premier League away game against Arsenal in February 1993, Leeds haven't drawn or kept a clean sheet in any of their subsequent 13 league visits to the Gunners. They've lost three, sorry, they've they've won three, lost ten, 
shipping 31 goals in, in total. So it shows you that this game is onto the side of Arsenal. With them regarding these remaining 10 games as finals, I think they are going to come up, up and running to send a message to City that we are going to really not stop. Leeds have won just two of their 23 Premier League games against the league leaders. You've got, you've got in that. They've just won two out of the 23 Premier League games with Premier League table leaders. They've drawn nine and lost 12. Though, both victories came away from home versus Middlesbrough in August 2020 and Man City in 2021. They've lost all four such games against Arsenal by an aggregate of 14 to 2. So, every time Leeds has been facing Arsenal when Arsenal is on top of the table, they've never survived. That's one of the other points that are really coming through and really let you know that it's not going to be a rosy a rosy a rosy time for Leeds at Emirates. It's going to be really a bumpy ride for them because Arsenal is not going to stop really attacking and really throwing threats onto the goal of Leeds. Then Arsenal have won their last six Premier League games, their joint longest such run under Mikel Teta. They last won seven in a row between August and October 2018 under United Emery. So he is looking to win his seventh game in a row. I've told you the six games Arsenal have won ever since they lost to City. They've gone ahead to win against, against Aston Villa. They've beaten <clears throat> Leicester City. They've beaten Everton. They've beaten Bournemouth. They've beaten Fulham and they've beaten Crystal Palace. Those are the six games that Arsenal have won in a row. The moment they win tomorrow, that is on Saturday, Arsenal would have put its winning stretch to seven consecutive games. That is a champion form. Then Leeds won their second away game of the season at Wolverhampton Wanderers last time out, netting more than more than more goals in that 4-2 victory than they had in their previous six or seven combined. So it looks like they are trying to find their scoring form, but I don't see them really surviving against Arsenal. So to me, I believe Arsenal is going to beat Leeds by three goals to nil, three goals to one. They might get a goal. They might find themselves on target, but Arsenal is going to go ahead and resilience really them and put them onto the sword. And I believe they are going to be beaten badly at the end. So guys, thank you very much for watching. That's my prediction. Arsenal three leads one and it might go ugly. It might go ugly. Arsenal might even put five past them if they don't find themselves in a position of really closing down Arsenal very well. So Mikel Arteta, this is another win that is all for him. It's painted Arsenal. And I think Arsenal is going to go ahead and really triumph after this beautiful win. And they'll come into this game of football after knowing the result of Liverpool. And one thing Arsenal has to do is not to really look even through the side mirror. Everything is in their hands. If at all they win nine games. If Arsenal win nine games and lose to City, they win the trophy. If Arsenal win eight games and beat City, they win the trophy. So those are the two permutations that Arsenal have to put in mind that... If that win the title, that's what they're supposed to do. Thank you guys for watching it through. Rockan David is my name. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Your reactions are welcome in the comment section below. Rockan David remains my name, a repetition made. But don't forget to subscribe and let's see close to 200 likes much in this video as Jesus starts and Eugenio. May the Almighty Lord bless you abundantly. I sign out for now. See you later, my lovelies.